Still this morning on ITV, bringing us to our fourth discussion segment here, we look at aviation as usual. And here, uh, we're going to be focusing on takeoff in known adverse weather condition. Of course, it's going to be with your number one aviation freak, a man who also doubles as a licensed estate surveyor and valuer, Mr. Gordon Ike. Very good morning to you. Hi, good morning, Jerry. Today they are keeping us a little closer. Yeah, yeah very, very, very close. <laughs> That's what it should be. Uh, yes, now, right. uh, let's do this quick, very, very quick. Yes. Um, what do we mean by takeoff in known adverse weather conditions? Wonderful question, Joe. Um, uh, very often, uh, uh, pilots will claim that if they don't get information from ATC, that's the air traffic mm -hmm. control, to either take off or land, that those will never take place. But in reality, in this case, we're going to be looking at, you see a situation where the ATC, that's the air traffic control, continue to warn the pilots that weather was worsening and weather was getting, you know, very unfriendly and uh, uh, it, it was expected that the pilots would just make a ramp return and uh, keep their passengers safe mm -hmm. but all you would hear was uh, the captain insisting on takeoff and, uh, and, and ask, please permit me to take off very quickly before you guess what's done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it is Being already. Smart and, uh, uh, that's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. And so that's, wh that's what we mean by takeoff. Mm -hmm. In none, if the adverse weather condition was unknown, mm -hmm. you won't use the word none. And you may not, you know, necessarily, you know, blame the pilot too much, or you blame the, the lack of equipment to detect you know, those, um, uh, those weather conditions. When the weather uh, condition yes. is terribly bad, uh, like you said, noon, yeah. the uh, condition is adverse, why should pilot take up where uh, we have fun and we have NCAA? Well, my, my dear, this is where sometimes we are tempted to, to use unacceptable language uh, or rather strong words to uh, describe um, the conduct of uh, individuals who uh, you know, operate these awesome machines called airplanes. Airplanes are always very faithful. They are very faithful machines. If, if human operators were to match the faithfulness of airplanes, they would never fall off the skies. They fall off the skies because human operators are usually you know, uh, very unfaithful and dishonest. Mm -hmm. And uh, more often than not, it's sometimes playing God and playing you know, smarter than human. Uh, you know, can be, and at the end of the day, it turns out to be quite foolish. And, and I, I often want to describe them like when you have, um, you know, mad people in the in the, in the cockpit. This is what you, what, what you find. And I want to, you know, very kindly tell our viewers, please. The essence of this program is not to hurt those that um, lost you know, uh, loved ones in those, this, all these uh, in, investigative things that we're doing with the aviation. The essence is to remind us that something that was totally unacceptable went wrong, and we don't have those happening anymore. Remind, uh, you know, those that are operating our airplanes that we handle our, our lives to, that we are more conscious now, we're more knowledgeable now, and we can't afford to have you get careless. In aviation, it's uh, safety, safety, and safety. Nothing in between. Okay, now let's, so, let's, start, with with you. With, let's start with clip one yeah. for, for, yeah. for want of time. Uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, can, we, can we go to clip one, please? Is it there for us? Very well. Uh, let, let's look at the, uh, is it, is it take off in known adverse weather conditions, the ADC flight uh, 53 air crash. You remember the air crash, mm -hmm. the, the one that took off from Abuja? And shortly after takeoff, came down. Now, flight summary. Let's summarize exactly how it went uh, and re refresh the memories of our viewers. Uh, you know, the date of that flight was the 29th October 2006. Um, cause of accident uh, was said to be wind shear and pilot error. Uh, accident site was Abuja, Nigeria. Uh, number of passengers uh, 105. Uh, crew five. Uh, fatalities 96 and survivors uh, nine of them. Um, uh, type of aircraft was Boeing 7372B7. Uh, name of our operator, Aviation Development Company, formerly known as ADC. 
uh, registration number 5NBFK, uh, original flight uh, was Margaret Airport International Airport, Calabar. Uh, stopover, first stopover was at uh, uh, Motela Mohammed International Airport, you know, Lagos. It, that's how the flight went before it came to Abuja and then uh, tried to head to Sokoto before the uh, things, unfortunate uh, yes, the unfortunate incident came. Uh, let's run to keep, uh, clip two very quickly. Clip two very quickly. Very well. Uh, we are continuing with flight summary. Um, last stopover, Nandi uh, Azikiwe International Airport, Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, final destination, uh, Sadiq Abubakar 3. International Airport Sokoto. He never made it to Sokoto, you know, and then we're going to see why. Um, if we go to uh, clip three, we'll be able to uh, take another look. Um, it would appear. Nah, it, it would appear. It would appear we have some issues there. But let's mm -hmm. let's uh, let's read on because we have it. Uh, they can listen to. Um, uh, they can listen to us. Uh, ADC Airlines, uh, the, the introduction, that's what Clip 3 is, is simply telling us, the introduction. Mm -hmm. ADC Airlines flight 53 was a scheduled uh, passenger flight. Mm -hmm. On the 29th of uh, October 2006, exactly 11.30 a.m. at uh, local time, the, the plane crashed shortly after takeoff from Nandi Azikiwe International uh, Airport Abuja en route to uh, Sokoto, Nigeria. The Boeing 737-2B7, that's the model of the, of the airplane that was involved, you know, carried 105 passengers and, fi and five crew members. Among the uh, you know, impo important passengers on board included very, very prominent uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Nigerians. Nigeria. Some of them traditional rulers. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Some of them traditional rulers. And then um, uh, more particularly, more particularly, three daughters of the, the, the former governor of uh, you know, uh, Kogi State, uh, the, that was uh, Governor Ibrahim Idris, mm -hmm. who uh, should be described as the luckiest man on earth in, in 2006 because three of those, his uh, daughters, survived. Mm. Uh, so um, if our technical situation will let us go to uh, clip, clip four, four. You, it'd be nice. Otherwise, we'll continue to read. Clip four. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Right. Um, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, Con continuing with the introduction. introduction. Yes. Now, uh, also on the flight was the first ever female ENT surgeon. Can you imagine? Mm. Ear, ear, nose, and throat. That's correct. Mm. You know, um, uh, Dr. Nenia uh, Mbo, uh, she, she, she was one of those, uh, you know, um, involved in that uh, fatal crash. And then Abraham Shehu Shagari, the son of uh, former president uh, Shehu Shagari. Take a look at that photograph. That, mm. that is a, a, the airplane in question, mm. the, the, the ADC um, uh, Boeing. That, some, some that three people uh, And that was, uh, that was, yes, that was in Portacot Airport when mm. the airport was mm. still looking as peak and span and mm. cool as it should be. Today is a shadow, trap. shadow, a shadow of, trap. Of, of his yes, old self. Yes, recorded so right. many, so, so many mishaps. Yeah, that, that, that mm -hmm. plane was part of that airport. Yeah, Clip 5, please. Clip 5. Very well. Um, the flight. Let's look at uh, uh, the, the flight. Uh, ADC Airlines Flight 53 departed Lagos for Abuja on scheduled passenger service mm -hmm. as Flight 63 at uh, 9.29 a.m. local time and uh, landed Abuja. That was the, uh, Flight 63 was the one that left Lagos for Abuja. Remember, he first of all left uh, Margaret Airport, Airport, headed to Lagos, and then from Lagos to Abuja, and was to, mm -hmm. supposed to now be heading to Sokoto before, before the fatal crash took place. Now, he landed Abuja at 10.20 a.m. At 11.14 a.m. in Abuja, the crew requested startup clearance which was promptly granted with information on prevailing weather situation. The startup was granted and information on prevailing weather situation was announced to the pilots. The, the startup? Oh, of course, the ATC, uh, air mm -hmm. traffic control. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 
you, you seek permission for everything you do in the company. But no, 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 if, if ATC granted that permission no, for startup, for startup, but just follow. You know, um, when you begin to mm -hmm. do your starting procedure, mm -hmm. you know, you must you, you know, and have your engines humming. Mm -hmm. you, you must get permission. No, I was just that. wondering if the weather is so terrible and uh, uh, and yeah, be patient. You see how okay. the sequence of events. Mm -hmm. You see the, the sequence of events. Um, uh, they got there with information on prevailing weather situation at 11:21 a.m. That was in Abuja. The crew requested clearance to taxi to the holding point. So you see, everything you do, you clear with the ATC because they are the ones seeing everyone and everybody, uh, you know, airplane in the whatever location. If you're going to have a clash, if there is, um, you know, some kind of uh, obstruction, uh, they will know and they will stop you. You understand? So um, uh, they got they got yet another clearance to go to the. Um, uh, holding point. The holding point is that point where you, you wait and then when uh, one has taken off and all the, uh, the pressure from the wind uh, clears off, you are let into the threshold to now get ready to blast away. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, a, that's a holding point. Okay? Then uh, the, the request was also granted along with updated information on the weather situation. All right. Within six minutes, while on the holding point, Abuja Power, the ATC, gave a series of six wind reports. So why you know the plane stood there waiting over a period of six minutes? Six weather reports, you know, uh, were given on the wind the, the wind situation, uh, including a statement hammering on the gusty nature of the wind. When you talk about gusty wind, you're talking about a sharp and sudden burst of, uh, of strong wind. That's what is known as gusty, you know, you, know, you know, gusty wind. They were warned. At that point, if I were one of those pilots, and if I were the captain, at that point, I would make a ramp return. I will turn around and, and, uh, and return to the ramp. Because of the, the weather is no friendly. That's correct. It was already clear that you might just have microburst, which was what exactly no, happened. No, but the, the, the to be blaming uh, the and it has a, a team of operators, uh, manager in the airport. They also seen, almost have seen that the weather is. Okay, uh, you're, you're getting yeah, something wrong. Um, as soon as uh, the dispatchers. Mm those that are known as dispatchers. Mm. You know, people mm. don't know what happens uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, when, when, when uh, you calculate everything the, that you the, need and hand over the... Aviation fuel consumption. That's correct. And your roof over the roof over and, and all of that. Wonderful. Yes. Once they, 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 they hand over, you know, the, uh, the flight plan, you know, as approved to, to, the, to the pilots, uh, and the ATC, the air traffic control, takes over. All instructions come from them, mm -hmm. and all approvals come from them. But sometimes you have recalcitrant pilots who insist on doing it their way, and that's when things really go wrong. But listen to this. He says now, uh, uh, ATC Airlines. What clip is that? Uh, uh, that's um, clip uh, six. That's no, six. No, uh, uh, we just finished with clip five. Okay. Let's go to clip six very quickly, so that uh, you know we continue with the, we, uh, the we, flight. We have the three flight, minutes left. The flight continues. Mm. The, the Abuja ATC further informed the crew that a thunderstorm was approaching the airport, and that weather situation was worsening. At 11.26 a.m., and in spite of the grave warning from the Abuja ATC, did you hear that? He says, the Abuja ATC further, further informed the crew that um, a thunderstorm was approaching the airport, and that weather situation was worsening. At 11.26 in spite of grave warnings from the Abuja ATC, the crew requested clearance for immediate takeoff. The Abuja ATC further harped on the deteriorating weather condition, which the crew clearly acknowledged. Right after taking off from runway 22, the Boeing 737 entered into a headwind, and I'm going to explain to you shortly you know, what happened to it and why it had that headwind. Uh, a headwind 
shift to tailwind uh, wind shear. Uh, don't, don't, don't worry about these terminologies. So I'll show you a schematic uh, diagram that will explain to you exactly what happened to that airplane. I have a, a schematic diagram coming in a, a minute. You know, um, um, which instantly affected the aerodynamic performance of the uh, uh, you know aircraft. Mm. Now, clip, uh, let's look at the uh, last clip, clip, clip seven. Uh, 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 clip seven. And then we'll, um, let's look at clip seven, so I can explain. Uh, uh, th there we go, Joe. Take a look at that, at that photograph. Uh, did you? Now that did you see? We have brought it back. Yeah, but uh, uh, there are a lot of viewers that uh, mm. didn't uh, mm. uh, get a chance to understand mm. it. Mm. You, know, you, you see, uh, you see the strong push, vertical push from the skies hitting the ground, and then having a spread out that is known as uh, outflows. Mm. You know that those spread out. 360 degrees to so no matter what direction you are coming from, you, you, you are um, you are affected by the, uh, the uh, outflow uh, first as a headwind, and then you pass the region of that headwind into the downdraft that pushes you down because that's mm -hmm. the wind is so strong and, mm -hmm. and coming vertically and straight down mm -hmm. to the to the air. And there's nothing and then, anybody can do uh, when it comes to well, you, you, you just have to you just have to avoid it if you mm -hmm. have uh, the, the equipment to uh, to detect its mm -hmm. uh, onset. And then you pass that region of uh, da uh, pushing down, and then the outflow comes behind you as a tailwind, and that uh, seals the nails on the coffin. But do we it have you do we have the equipment to detect microbursts? Oh, of course, yeah, there are a lot of uh, equipment. Do in Nigeria, uh, uh, do we have uh, 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 the, the, the honourable minister will have to answer that question. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure we have. The mm. sad thing again that happened, you see, in during part two, you see another sad thing that happened on that mm. day. Um, uh, the the radar. The, the radar machine in uh, at the Abuja airport was switched off, mm. which was why a lot of lives were lost. As a matter of fact, when that plane hit the ground uh, and burst into flames, uh, you know, three people all over the places, the, the whole environment was on fire, and people were screaming. The villagers uh, testified that people were screaming and calling for help, but nobody knew the the location of that airplane because the radar at the airport was switched off. Why? The, the, the uh, uh, NCA and fan of, of, of the days in question will have to answer the question. So, so this is for, for what you are saying, for, for, for what you are saying now, yes, yes. Uh, reasons why the uh, uh, radar was shut down till now has not been answered, has not been provided for you. No, it. no, no. We, 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 nobody has told us why the radar was shut down because if, if, the, radar, if the radar had been on, the precise location and you know uh, where that plane was lost would have been would have been known, and helicopter would have been scrambled and given the coordinate uh, of this the surrounding area where the, the plane probably came down, and they would have been found in less than five minutes. They would have been found in less than five minutes, and a lot of lives would have been saved. But here we are. Uh, we don't even. Uh, I don't think we even have airborne firefighting. Uh, 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 so, air, so, air so, 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 if you, that, 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 you, so, so. Let's not miss out on these points yeah. because if we get too much in a hurry, mm. we miss out on selling points yeah, yeah, for we, we, those, we, we, those in, in, in power. Uh, those in, mm. uh, in, in, in power, mm. or, or rather, who are saddled with responsibility to get all this thing done. Mm. Joe, firefighting is big business right now, mm. and is very important. I don't think we have firefighting airplanes that can, you know, overfly a burning area and drop, uh, you know, some, uh, f you know, fire extinguishing materials and in one swoop have a large, you know, area shut down. You know, uh, if we, if for instance the radar had been on and the precise location of that airplane when it when it crashed. Um, uh, was known, was, was known, mm. was known um, and the uh, helicopter that will carry you know rescue team to this to the site will, will have been scrambled and headed that direction and will have arrived there in less than five minutes and then uh, another another firefighting either helicopter or fixed wing firefighting airplane would have run through the entire uh, place deposit you know, some this fire extinguishing materials shut uh, down I, the fire. I, I, I think that Half I, of those passengers would have been saved. That's your recommendation. But that, that's but, correct. But, but, that's correct. But that is capital intensive, and you know it. Well, Joe, I hate to hear this. 
We are making a whole lot of money. Okay, we, we, we will look at that. We will look at that in the next session. Yeah. I uh, must thank you for coming on the show this morning. I must thank you. You know, time is very much our, our friend here, which is why we are saying, uh, well, if we can get more sponsorship, uh, maybe we can just uh, make it up to uh, 60 minutes so that um, we can do, uh, you know, most time, you know, say it the way it is. But, um, we we'll have to continue from that next week. That's the most we have on uh, the vision. Of course, I'm sure that topic is very, very key when you take off in known adverse weather conditions. So that, part two, yes, yeah, it has been, it of course, God being EK, your number one aviation freak in, in, in Nigeria. We'll continue um, on this same topic next week. Now, we'll take a quick break when we come back. It shall be time to look at the economic and political implication of President Mahmoud Buhari's visit to the uh, states in the Northwest. <laughs>